Does your Roblox game have boring buttons? Oh. Let's fix that. In this video, I'll show you how to turn your plain buttons into something way more satisfying. It'll have your players hooked. Yoink. Today, we're going over a spew button and a shimmer button. Let's get started. All right, so I'm in a new Roblox place, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste over the screen view I've made. This has the two buttons I'll be using as examples. Um, do note that the GUI does not matter for this tutorial. The shimmer and the effect will work on any kind of button. All right, so what we're gonna need is inside the starter geo, we're gonna need a folder. And in the folder, we're going to need a local script. And then inside the local script, we're gonna need a module script. We can name the local script buttons and we can name the module script button actions. All right, now we can get started on the code. That's all we need. The button script is going to be the exact same as the previous button videos. So it's gonna be local button actions equals require script dot button actions. And then we're gonna define the GUI script dot parent dot parent. And then we're gonna initialize the buttons, so button actions. I'm gonna name this button actions module just so it's easier to read. All right, we're gonna start with shimmer equals button actions module dot shimmer spew. We'll call it equals button actions module dot spew. And then we're gonna loop through everything. We'll loop the UI descendants for underscore comma descendant in pairs GUI get descendants do if descendant is a, I'm gonna search for a GUI button. And then we're gonna say for tag comma action in pairs button actions do if descendant as tag tag then action to send it. There we go. This is our local script done in less than 20 lines of code. Now we're gonna come over the module script button actions. And at the top, we're gonna to define some services. So first we're going to get the tween service. So tween service equals game, get service, tween service. Then we're gonna get the players, game, get service, players. Then we're gonna get the run service. Game, get service, run service. And then we're going to get the local player equals players, local player. And then we're gonna get the player GUI. And we're gonna get the player's mouse. All right, and then we can change this module to say button actions. All right, starting off, we're gonna start with spew function. So we're gonna say function button action that spew. And then we're gonna get the button, GUI button. And then we're gonna say coin image equals, and you can put whatever image you want in here. I'm gonna be using this coin icon, which is just this. And I'm gonna say the number of coins to spawn each time equals 20. And then local coin size is gonna be equal to udem2 dot new, zero comma 40 comma zero comma 40. This is gonna set them to 40 by 40 pixel on the offset, which is not great for all devices, but works in this tutorial. We're gonna say local GUI parent equals player GUI, find first child of class. And then we're gonna say screen GUI. All right, next we're gonna make the function and we're gonna say button dot mouse button one up. And then we're gonna connect that to spew coins. And then the spew coins function will go right above it and we'll say local function spew coins. And we're gonna say local start X comma start y equals get start position from the button. And then we'll come back to this function. Then we're going to go up again outside of this function. And we're going to make a local function. I can just copy this right here. And then we're going to say local position comma size equals button dot absolute position comma button dot absolute size. And then we're going to return mouse and mouse dot x does not equal zero and mouse dot y does not equal zero. I'm gonna close the parentheses, enter, and we're gonna type and. Make sure this is indented. I just do this for readability. And mouse.x, comma mouse.y, enter again, and then we're gonna say or position.x plus size.x divided by two, comma position.y plus size.y divided by two. Now that's the get position, so we can come back down into our spew coins function, and then we're gonna to wanna to say for underscore equals one, and number of coins do. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna loop through the number of coins. So it's gonna do it 20 times. And we're gonna define a coin. Say coin equals instance.new. And then we're gonna call this an image label. And then we want coin.visible to equal false right away. And we want coin.size to be equal to coin size. We want coin.image to be equal to coin image. We want coin.background transparency to be equal to one. We want the coin.z index to be equal to one. I set it to one so it appears behind the button and then coin.parent will equal GUI parent. And then we want coin.visible equal true. And then we want to apply the spew to the coin. And we want to send over the start X and the start 
apply to this new function. And we can come above this and we can define the next function. So that'll be a local function apply spew. And we're going to be getting the image or the coin. I'll say image for this and the start X and the start Y. And then what we were going to want to do is we're going to define gravity. And this is going to be a math.random. And then we're going to say 150 to 250. And then we're going to define the lifetime. This is also a math.random. And then we'll say 100 to 200. And then we're going to say local velocity X equals the math.random. We actually want to come up here to lifetime and divide this by 100. So it's only around for a second or two. And then velocity X is going to be negative 90, 75. And then we're going to define velocity y equals also math.random and this is going to be 100 and 350 and then we're going to define local elapsed equals zero this is the starting time and then we can make a new connection so we can say local connection and we can say con equals run service that render stepped connect function and then in here we want delta time so we can just say dt for delta time and we can do elapsed plus equals delta time and we can do velocity y plus equals gravity times delta time and then we can say image dot position equals udem2 dot new and we're going to do zero and we're going to get the start x we're going to add the velocity x we're going to multiply that by the elapsed time and zero again and then we're going to do the same for the y so start y plus velocity y times the time elapsed and then we're going to get the image dot image transparency equals math dot minimum one comma elapsed divided by lifetime so this will uh set the transparency over the lifetime then we're going to say if elapsed is greater than or equal to the lifetime then we want to disconnect the connection and we want to destroy the image and there we go. That is the that is the function done. I accidentally put a Q there instead of a P. So now when I click play, we should see it spews the coins. Oh, it's spewing downwards. So we're almost there. Okay, I see the problem. It seems like I missed a minus right here. So in velocity, I went on a negative, so it shoots upwards. We can push play again. And then there we go. We got a cool coin spew. Super easy. And it, it looks great. And you can tweak the values right here if you want. Yeah, that's the coin. So let's get started on the shimmer button. And now. All right, back in the module script, we're going to start working on the shimmer button. This is even easier than the spew button. So we're going to define another function. Function button actions that shimmer. I'm going to get the button. GUI button. I'm going to say local shimmer overlay equals button find first child shimmer overlay. And then we're going to say if not shimmer overlay, then shimmer overlay equals instance dot new. And I'm going to create a frame. And then we're going to say shimmer overlay dot name equals shimmer overlay. And then we're going to set the size of the shimmer overlay to be udem2 dot new one zero one zero. And then we're going to set the background transparency to be equal to 0 0.3. And then we're going to set the background color three to be color three dot new. And we're going to make it white. Then we're going to set the Z index to be button dot Z index plus one. So it's right above the button. And then we're going to say shimmer overlay dot clips descendants equals true and then shimmer overlay dot visible equals true and then shimmer overlay dot parent equals button find first child color or button then we're going to define the gradient the local gradient equals instance new ui gradient and then we're going to set the gradient dot name is equal to shimmer gradient and then we're going to set the gradients rotation is equal to 45 degrees and then we're going to do gradient dot transparency equals number sequence dot new and then we can open table and then we can do number sequence key point dot new and we're going to need this three times and in the first one we're going to do 0 comma 0 0.85 and the second we're going to do 0 0.5 comma 0 and then the last one we're going to do 1 comma 0 0.8 Five. Make sure you add commas after all these. And then there we go. And then outside this, we're going to say gradient dot offset equals vector two dot new negative one comma negative one. And we're going to say gradient dot color equals color sequence dot new. And then we're going to say color three dot new one one one. And then comma color three dot new one one one. Again, and we're going to say gradient dot parent equals shimmer overlay and then we're going to define a corner in here so button find first child ui corner if corner then we're going to corner clone 
transparent Pico Shimmer Overlay. So basically what this does is if there is a corner inside the button, we're going to clone it and parent it to the Shimmer Overlay so the Shimmer has the same corner as the button. Great, now we can come out of this end statement. We can say local gradient equals Shimmer Overlay. Find first child, Shimmer Gradient. I spelled gradient wrong up here. So come up here, Shimmer Gradient. Oh, these are all spelled wrong. There we go, now that we have the correct names. Okay, so we're gonna come back down here. Local gradient equals Shimmer Overlay. Find first child, Shimmer Gradient. If not gradient then return and so this will prevent errors and then we're going to do a local function create shimmer tween then we're going to say gradient dot offset equals vector two dot no negative one comma negative one and then we're going to return the tween create gradient tween info offset equals vector two dot no one comma one and then we're going to come outside of this local function and we're going to say nice dot spawn and we're going to spawn a function and in this function we're going to say while button and button dot parent do if button dot visible then shimmer overlay dot visible equals true and then local tween equals create shimmer tween and then we're going to play the tween and then we're going to test for when it's wait completed and then we're going to say wait and then outside the if and we're going to say else and then shimmer overlay dot visible equals false pass dot wait 0.1 seconds this should be the entire uh, loop. Oh, looks like I forgot a comma here. Tween info, comma. And I forgot to define the tween info. So right here, we're gonna say tween info equals tween info dot new 2.2 enum. We'll do the uh, easing tile sign and uh, enum dot easing direction. We'll do in and out. Now when we click play, you can see we got a nice shimmer on the on the button, but we can see that it's leaving behind the white. We don't want that. Okay, I seem to have found the problem here. In the number sequence, I accidentally have a comma here. This should be a period. Um, now when we click play, we should see a nice tween. Yep, and there's a nice shimmer that goes across. There we go. So now we have the coin spew and a nice shimmer. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.